Anyway. Good evening and welcome to Open Minds. Yes, I am. Um, I have a good few shows coming out this week. We're very busy this week. And this evening, I have a wonderful guest, a lovely gentleman, Tariq B.B. Bliss. Um, welcome, Tariq, to Open Minds. Thank you, Gloria. It's an honor and a pleasure. I, I love you already, and I'm excited to see what we're going to co-create on this call. Oh, we're going to co-create. It's going to go all the way down the <laughs> rabbit hole and everywhere else. So yes. Open Minds is about individuals coming on and sharing their spiritual journeys, sometimes sharing obstacles that appeared and how they overcome it. Um, everyone would do it differently, but for the audience sake, you know, it's like, wow, I can do that. So Tarek, where did it all begin for you? Where did your spiritual journey begin? Great question, Gloria. And, and I, I know that me, you, and our some people in our audience can look at that as, you know, realms within realms and mm -hmm. within the infinite, but uh, definitely in this lifetime coming in, mm -hmm. uh, feeling very sensitive, very empathic, mm -hmm. very confused. Mm -hmm. It felt like everyone was like, okay with, let's mm -hmm. call it the simulation that we're in. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, there's something weird about this. So whether am I an old soul? Am I a Pleiadian, Arcturian? Am I who knows? But confused as a child, born into uh, Islam. So my father is born Muslim, although I think he's atheist. So our heritage is Palestinian from my dad's side, mm -hmm. and that has its whole history. And you yeah. can go into like yeah. ancient aliens and yes. the history of humanity and yes. you know the world religions and yes. yeah, and, and and so it comes with its uh, ancestral karma and beauty and culture yes um and, and then you've got and that's the birthplace of jesus um Absolutely. yeah Absolutely. um and then you've got my mom's lineage which goes back to lebanon and at one point that whole region yes. was one one yeah it was one name before it got yeah. divided and conquered um and then so yeah born born into my family feeling like the black sheep of the family not fitting in with my culture with my i know that friends. feeling <laughs> yeah uh huh uh huh uh, not fitting in with my culture, with my yeah. friends at school. I literally felt they would approach me like the beings in your paintings. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, they would approach me like I look like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. 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 It's like, I remember as a child, I never fitted in to any of the reality. Mm -hmm. And as a very young child, I thought I must be adopted or mm -hmm. kidnapped. Okay. Because I, what did you find? at this point and as as young children we don't have the the comprehension or the inference to you know what we know now but i would say why aren't they seeing reality the way i see it yeah totally uh, we're seeing we're both having the same experience or something but i would my perception was well according to them screwy there was something totally wrong. We have um, those special glasses that yeah, let us exactly. see through the matrix. Yeah. And it's like trying to go, well, why am I here? You know, what's going on? So I do resonate with that part of it. Yeah. But do go on, do go on. Yeah, Gloria, similar. I'm sure we have similar uh, questions. For me, the questions were same like you. I, I would uh, be in class and I'd look around and I'm like, wow, these guys really are have bought into the, the class programming. <laughs> and I was, I was like, Okay, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to daydream. No, no, I'm do. going to, you know, I'm my guides rebel. were. <laughs> yeah, I'm my guides were. Yeah, the rebel. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're the rebels. We're the yeah. free thinkers. Yeah. We're, we're the ones yeah. that can't be controlled, right? We came in with this spirit that is untamable. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent a lot of time meeting with the school principal and in the yes. hall. And I I'm an 80s so. baby. I don't know if they used to punish you guys in, in class. But oh, like, God, yeah. I, I used to get the right? ruler. Um, always sent to the headmistress Ruler. daily, yeah. two or three times a day, actually. Yeah. Ruler, the slipper, stand still like a whatever. Yes, the statue. Yes, yeah. I did. That's, that's traumatic. I mean, I'm already overwhelmed and confused. And now the, the teacher is telling me to stand in front of the class facing the corner of the wall yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with one leg up and, and my arms up or yeah, something yeah, ridiculous yeah. like that. Yeah. I'll be um, yeah, old school, old school traditions that are no longer here. So I'm, I'm glad. God for that. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, hey, come on. Look at us now. Yeah. 
Look at us now. Exactly. Hello. Discipline is now my, my good friend, which I hated growing up. But I definitely would ask God uh, at that time. You know, my mom was born Catholic. My dad was born Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I was brought, brought into those um, traditions and ways mm -hmm. of thinking. And um, and and, uh, and then so I was born in Jordan. We when then we immigrated to Dubai, which was a whole interesting thing for an empath. I felt like I was like in Las Vegas of the Middle yeah. East. It just felt heavy. There's a lot of talk about jinn and dark spirits oh, and yes. part of the culture. Yes, I that. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's all this hierarchy that really didn't resonate with me, where yeah. it's like super rich and wealthy and super poor. And like people are treated better based on what clothing they're wearing, what car they drive. And yeah. it just felt very like mm. the opposite of wherever I came from on a soul yeah. level. But I there had to be some form of of knowing where I came from because I was comparing it. I was like, yeah. why is it God, why is it dense here? God why am why am my family different than i am why am i different than everyone else yeah yeah um I, I, I mean, would you call that um Tarek, would you call that i mean at the time we wouldn't know what we were doing and millions of other people going through a similar to it but now i would say we as children were using that starting to practice um discernment yeah analytical mind discernment yes. questioning discernment. we didn't know what yeah. we were doing because we hadn't yeah. So I look back now, it's always hindsight, it's a bitch, isn't it? I think I think for many that was learning to use discernment. Mm. In me, coming from criminology is deconstructing, mm. deconstructing everything around me. And I think okay. that's what I was doing all the time, using discernment and de but not realizing because I didn't have, you know, the comprehension of a, of a child to yeah. go to take it that far or have yeah. that understanding but does that resonate with you that that's that totally resonates because the number one question i ask now gloria is what makes us different when we're the ones questioning this the yeah. you know the the mainstream idea of what's yeah. happening in, a, in yeah. the world now yeah. why is it that there's just a handful of people like what makes us different to someone who goes okay they're telling us this is good we should do it they're telling yeah. like what why why don't we all have that ability? And you just answered that question is some of us at an earlier age were questioning our teachers, yeah. challenging authority, questioning yeah. why are we here? Whereas most people just took the, you know, took the Kool-Aid and, and just ran with it. They certainly um, question it today. I can tell you. <laughs> they, everything. They've heard enough and now discernment's kicking in, but I'm not going to digress. Time. Do yeah. go on, do go on. Yeah. Um, so feeling different and all that and, and knowing that I came from a, a higher vibration place because I was like, God, why did you send me to hell? And it wasn't why I chose to come here. It's like, why did you send me here? And this is just based on what I was taught about God and, yeah. you know, the simple mind of a child, but an <clears throat> old soul as well. Mm -hmm. and, and I just felt us surrounded by heavy energies. People would yeah. bully me in like in the playground, they'll just find me and just start beating me up yeah. for no reason. So it's like, why did you send me all these demons? Like to me, it was like you sent me these demons, and I had I was I was dealing with a very abusive um, uh, a relationship, and I was like, why did you send me Satan to to be in my life? Like it was that extreme from my yeah, perspective. You, you would be coming from um, the religious um, aspect, so the social determinants about around you was Islam. Um, I did marry in, into the faith later on, but however, my my time, I was brought into, um, the audience know this, into a family that just liked to torture children and rape mm. and things like that. And I, and at that point, um, all I had were the energies, which I called the dead. I would see spirit and I would mm. experience. And I used to, this is my interpretation at the beginning, and I love to hear everyone share their first conversation with God. You know what mine was at the beginning um, was, God, if you exist, this is a God's truth, if you exist, mm. would you kill my mother? And yeah. she could die because she was an abuser. And I said, right, that's it. You don't exist at all. I don't believe. And I was going on. But the weirdest thing was, as I was questioning, as you were questioning, inside of me was this love that I knew there was something does that make mm -hmm. sense to you 100 percent. for me gloria was my dad just being like you know why'd you do bad in school yeah. why'd you do this why'd you do that and i would just crack and i'd start crying and i'd run yeah. to the washroom and as soon as it was just me in, in my own space 
Yeah. I literally felt the presence of, yes. of love, yes. of God, yes. of angels, or whatever you want to call whatever it. Whatever we could think it was yeah. at that time, but it was always there. And, you know, I look back now and think, oh, shit, you know what I used to say? I'd ask him to kill my mother because I was being tortured. And I yeah. didn't, I'm a small child, and I didn't Simple. know anything. Survival. But, you know, I can look back and say, well, you know, the source, I am the source. But if I go to the Homo sapien, you know, come away from the conscious aspect, this source was always there. Yeah. Walk in the path with me. And I yeah. just didn't realize at that time. Now yeah. I have a, a, a different understanding of what that means. But yeah. I think it's really important that we touch upon the childhood aspects of this because there are many um, families out there with children that are going through this. So this is why 100%. I'm touching on it with you now because we've both experienced similar so it could be a parent listening well you know I may look at my child differently now um, yeah my child is is it behaving this way um it could help you don't know yeah I feel like if I would recreate that it would be uh or if I'm that parent and if I'm my parents now and you know my child that was like me it's just for me to be very uh soft and gentle and yeah. listening more yeah. and yeah. asking questions including me yeah um you know we want to be included we want to be heard we, have, we struggle being seen we yes. feel very we already feel very different so being very mindful with the words we use being encouraging yes. absolutely um and if we do fuck up which we will uh, yeah. we're not perfect yeah. parents just you know cl creating closure hey i'm sorry i upset i snapped at you i do this till this day i snap at people i'm like i'm sorry i snapped yeah. You know, it's, you know, I take full responsibility. Human. Come on, it's part of being human. human. Yeah. It's experience. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's, uh, we won't go, we won't digress too much, but it's something I wanted to raise that just come into my awareness, talk about this for a little bit. Um, because many, you know, many beings that are on the shows or written books now have come from a very similar um, mm -hmm. background Mm -hmm. before they come into the, the path they're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but hey-ho. Um, and I just thought for today, if anyone with their children is, you know, they picking up, uh, resonate with what we're saying and with their children, Tarek says, be gentle, be kind, allow them to be who they are um, yeah. and support them. Yes, they need. we all need guidance, but there's a way to guide and there's a way definitely not to guide. Like, yeah, and school's not for all the kids. Like to me, yes. school is actually way more of a challenge than it was helpful. Yes. So yes, the parent has good intention. Yes, they yes. want me to send me the best school, but that was a nightmare for me. It was actually detrimental. Because when, when I was a kid, my teacher was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, think about what you want to be oh, when you grow up. Oh, wow. And all I can think of is the idea of, you know, Jesus, Muhammad, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Moses. And I'm just like inspired by the figures that they spoke about in religion. It doesn't mean I'm um, yeah. anything close to that, but it means that that's the path. Yeah. The spiritual path is what yeah. I got as a kid is, is my path. Yeah. And school didn't cater to that. So no, no. finding out what your kids' passions are and really making sure do they want, Absolutely. like I remember my first day of school, Gloria, my dad's like, you're going to go to school. I started crying because my spirit knew that that's not what's best for me. Yeah. And I was like, why do I need to go to school? That's the challenging questioning part of us. And he was like, because everyone goes to school. So that exactly. that alone just shows you the state of our world where it's like yeah. we're doing it because everyone's doing it. Yeah. So exactly. we either keep that that fight and that fire and that, you know, rebel spirit yeah. or some of us give in and we're going. I think many, many at that point gave in and maybe later on in life, you know, become the, the anarchist. Yeah. Um, I was just constantly in trouble all the way through. I was just mm -hmm. hit at home and hit at school. It wasn't much difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my case, it pushed me as a um, as a young teenager to attempt suicide. I mean, I was mm -hmm. seeing dead people. This was going on, and mm -hmm. I couldn't fit in. I was so uncomfortable, and um, I thought, I just, I can't. I'm going to end it. And I'd been pushed to that point as a, I don't know how old, thirteen, between thirteen and sixteen. I can't recall. And I remember, you know, that doing it. And the calmness of doing it. And that's another thing. Please do not judge people um, for, for suicide attempts or suicide. Because I, I don't know how I got into that space. Mm -hmm. It just occurred as an experience to experience mm -hmm. it. That's all. And obviously, you know, I didn't die. 
However, it was from that experience of, all I remember is a lie, I'm sorry, I have no story to narrate, that experience shifted something as a, as a young girl, a teenager, mm -hmm. it shifted something. And I seem to have what I call like a, a spirit. So I wasn't the, why I'm going with this, I wasn't the anarchist or rebel no more, yeah, that, that sticking out like a sore thumb and getting knocked down. I had this passion of this mission. I am that I am. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. And I don't fear any of you no more. Mm -hmm. And it was the fear that, so that shifted me. This rebel in you, and when you went through that, what point did it shift from being the rebel and why do I have to go to school? And you actually shifted and you had this power because there's a yeah. power comes in, isn't there? hundred percent. So I was writing, I was uh, editing one of my uh, courses. I created this infinity healing modality. Um, it's just a healing, a powerful healing technique. And in it, we were talking about entities. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was re, I was doing like a second edition yeah. of yeah. it. And I just started channeling all this information, yeah. which I'd love to share with you guys about mental health, addictions, entities, because that's a big part of my story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened was, um, so to answer your, so I'll, I'll revisit what happened to me at four that really, I'm only now realizing that there was a, a reptilian, mm -hmm. kundalini, sexual yeah. violation that happened at age yeah. four, which really is a big deal. And I'd love to shed some light on it. Um, but what came for me, I was in victim, I was stuck in victim. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was stuck in blaming my father for yeah. being tough on me, yeah. uh, which, which kept me stuck. I wasn't evolving. Yeah. I was stuck in anger and revenge and, and all that. And it reached the point where I was, it was so buried in my being that <clears throat> I was abusing alcohol and drugs and I was doing yeah. coke and getting into fights and arrests and cops and all sorts of drama. And then it reached that's that point common, where, by the way, that's common. Um, I didn't yeah. do drugs, but I did yeah. do alcohol big time. It's yeah. very common. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to numb ourselves. We're trying to medicate yeah. ourselves yeah. in the best way yeah. we know how. Yeah. Um, you know, we weren't surrounded by spiritual people who were like, come do yoga, come do breath work, come. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't exist back in my day. No. This yeah. Day. <laughs> there. Same. Yeah. The alcohol so, was there. Yeah. It alcohol was. was there in abundance, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah trying to self-medicate, trying to numb ourselves, yeah. trying to cope with our traumas. And it reached that point where it was so sad because all my friends were passed out on the sofa. The sun's coming out. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's already the next day. And I'm still smoking, not enjoying the cigarettes, still drinking, not enjoying the alcohol. Mm -hmm. And it reached that point where I felt like my heart just kind of had a spasm. It, it felt like it was going to stop beating. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to die. And I just prayed and I asked God for a second chance. I, I apologize because I felt like I wasted my life. That was my only regret, not fear of death, Gloria, which I'm sure you don't, uh, but feel like I wasted my life. Like all of that for nothing. There was some part of me that knew there was more. Um, and so from that, I reclaimed my power. My gu guidance told me to reach out to my father and forgive him for being tough on me or not giving me the love I wanted. And it started this whole beautiful process of reclaiming my power, letting go of yes, the victim, yeah. creating my life. And then I discovered spirituality, hypnosis, yeah. healing, started a practice. It's been 13 years on that mission, but it's it's a never end. It's not like, and now my life is, you know, no, no, all it, it, love. It, no. it goes on. It's a continuation. Yeah. It's in flux. It's in flow. Yeah. But and definitely it, aligned with my purpose and mission yeah. Yeah. more than ever before. It just gets more and more. Uh, clearer and fine-tuned um and 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 what i say what we do for ourselves we bless it forward to everyone else so yeah. when i forgave my father the hardest yeah. thing i ever had to do uh and now i've been blessing it to everyone who comes to me for yeah, a session yeah. i could be yeah, like yeah, hey yeah. Have you, is there unresolved trauma with anyone let's go through the forgiveness process yeah. Yeah. when i've discovered my purpose as a healer i ask my you know people i connect with do you know what your purpose and passion is if they don't i'll help them align you with that, that i find that resonates so much because part of my career in crime no i'm not a criminal um i worked in child protection i was a domestic violence facilitator mm -hmm. i was a mental health nurse blah, 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 all the rest mm -hmm. criminologist is um i went through the process of counseling and working through in what we call um the standard human um principles of it and it worked because many people were saved from domestic violence uh, along the way. However, and I find 
that it's then skill sets that we pick up at some point that like a training we they're transferable and what I do now which is um I don't work in that field no more is I use the same skill sets with mm -hmm. people come to me and talking of self-realization, how to deconstruct the human experience, how to let go of ideas, concepts, beliefs that aren't mine. In, you know, in um, domestic violence, it's, it's breaking down the Stockholm syndrome, same mm -hmm. principle. And so them skill sets I, I transfer to what I do now. So I can yeah. see how that works with you. Um, it's like, and you say, because I used to think I'm always going to be before self-realization. I'm always going to work in crime and child protection. And, oh, it's such a good job when the ego is really egoing, you know. And after many, many experiences, then I realized it wasn't about me. That was the biggest one. And then I understood why I'd gone through the process I'd gone through. Them, that, them skill sets, you know, them, even them beatings. Even then, why why don't I fit in? Why doesn't my parent, mental health, child abuse, all that we experience through the, the first part of the journey are the tools we needed to complete what we're, we're at now and to continue. 100%. Does that resonate with you? 100%. I remember Deepak Chopra saying once, like you can spend your whole life um, healing what you've experienced as a kid. But I would also say we can spend our whole life benefiting yeah. from like, or alchemizing the traumas into our greatest gifts. Absolutely. So, and, and a lot of healers stem like experience traumas. And, and then like, for me as a kid, I'm like, how, do, let me try to figure out my mom. Let me try to figure out my dad. Why do people, you know, do this? And why is there darkness in the world? So all those skills and then my emotional sensitivity based on yeah. all the trauma I became highly emotional sensitive yes. yeah. that I could just sit next to you for a minute and go hey what's going on in your neck or you know so out of survival our being then gets all these extra sensory uh gifts so yeah. it's, um, intuition gets heightened for Everything survival gets heightened empathy Everything. yeah yeah and now people a lot of people suffer with empathy and being um highly sensitive but yeah. It's up to us to direct it. Can we tune out the world when it's overwhelming? Can we choose when cho choose consciously when to use your gift and not have it just kind of yeah. on all the time? But when you're conscious of how to use it, it is such a gift. Yeah. You can thrive from it as a career. You can have a fulfilling relation, like in a partnership. Today, I was like, hey, to my partner, I was like, I'm feeling something. I'm not sure what it is, but this emotional intelligence is, I mean, I know women love, a person who can just be emotionally yeah. aware uh so imagine all beings evolved to well, it's, or it's, we can it, teach I agree with you. it's i mean I, obviously through my career um and I, I came in and i had all the senses telekinesis everything as a child and mediumship um and that was an asset for for me to survive mm -hmm. that was the first thing i was given that um, that was heightened to survive the daily mm. life. So mm. I went on my senses, you know, what's going to happen today, read it, what was going. But that later on, when I went into my career, it was toned down. It wasn't about me. Then I could work that with, you know, victims of serious crime. I'm mm -hmm. reading them. So I know how to gently go in and see where the trauma was mm -hmm. and to start to unpack it or start to deconstruct and when to pull back so again that's another skill set Tarek of mm -hmm. a tool that is transferable through going through what we label a traumatic experience it's yeah it's beneficial 100 percent, Gloria so you can alchemize we can yeah. alchemize our negativity to positivity victim consciousness to yeah. let's call it divine or creator consciousness yeah so as long and and the, the world really now <laughs> is is promoting um, a victim. Hey, you know, you're black, your ancestors were slaves in America, like you're a victim or women, oh, women, you know, men yeah. violated, you're a victim. Yeah. And and honestly, the the people who are trying to manipulate us love victim con yeah. consciousness because yeah. you're powerless. You're giving your power, as long as you're in victim, you're giving your power, giving power, your away. power away. Yeah, I know, I agree. I said on many podcasts and the audience know, I won a bloody Oscar for playing the best victim when I was younger. Right? I yeah, was we were the so good best. At it. Yeah. BAFTA's Oscars, I so believed I was this victim. I really yeah. pulled it off. I need an Oscar yeah. for it. And I, yeah. I, but it's through that 
you uh, the experience of going through that and when you start to work through and come through the other side and at mm -hmm. the time i was doing the counseling to victims of serious crime that was reflecting back to me i was in the mirror and mm -hmm. as i thought mistakenly i was helping another i was helping myself and yeah. that realization earlier on whoa and you know and so again understanding the word trauma mm -hmm. i don't perceive it as i did when i won the oscar as a victim um, yeah it but it's it's you can see we're set up to obtain these skill sets for whatever area that we are supposed to go into eventually off mm -hmm. to another timeline or so i think so we mustn't digress too much it's such a fast we could talk for hours just on this but we can't because it's mm -hmm. we will we'll, we will digress so right let's go to the next next stage Tarek. what happens yeah uh next stage is like the in the hero's journey now you're reaping the benefits of yeah. the traumas right like if you're still stuck in the trauma i yeah. need the audience to know that there's the other side of it. Like you don't go through all of that and stay there. No. You go through all of that and there's a reaping of the rewards of yeah. going through that hero's journey. So on the other side of that, there's uh, beautiful relationships, friendships, getting out of my comfort zone, traveling, discovering my passion and having a purpose and sharing healing and learning and growing and healing myself and um, financial abundance and, and just being of service to the planet yeah. and helping people take the steps that I've taken yeah. that they still haven't. So beautiful, beautiful on the other side. Cause it, like you said, it could have just ended. I'm out of here. I'm checking out. This is too much. It's not what I signed I up did for. I try, but yeah. obviously, you know, it wasn't written. <laughs> I did try. Yeah. But unfortunately, was, some people take I'm that supposed exit. To experience that though. I was supposed to experience um, the, cause I was resisting so much. And if you resist, it will persist. And I was pushed and pushed and pushed that I said, I've got to get out of here. Um, but it wasn't in my timeline this time to get out of here. But it was the experience of going through um, the, 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 I don't know how to say it, this um, motion of I need to just end this experience, um, doing what I did to, end, to try and end the experience. But then coming through the other side of the experience, you come through going, fuck. Mm -hmm. Fuck. And not only there's a duality there, it's paradoxical. One, there innately was no fear of death ever. It did creep back later on through as I got controlled again, so to speak. But that, that I do remember. And the other side, it was, I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. I want to carry on the experience. So out of every trauma you go through, um, I, f I feel like you, it's the knowing that, and that comes out on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't recommend you do this at all. Um, you, you can't. You can't consciously do it unless it's in your path to go down that road, just to experience that. So I totally resonate with everything you're saying about yeah. how this goes. It's... Uh, that's We're cool. not making it light of this um, at all, because obviously, as you can tell, Tarek and myself as have what you would call victim experiences. So we've had to do the work to be able to get to the place where we can openly and safely share this is what happened. Mm -hmm. And this is how it should be, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's like every one of those experiences. So like right now, People can look at me and like go and go, wow, you know, you work at home, you're you're yeah. in charge of your hours and yeah. you're in charge of your business. Well, yeah. well, try having like a very domineering parent your whole life. And that's indirectly. Yeah. That was the school to yeah. teach me yeah. that, that I value my independence and yeah. wanting to work for myself. So yeah. look at all your, you know, it's easy for us to look at someone and go, wow, look at them. They have it all. But like, what did they have to go through? So look yeah. at all your traumas and, and see how you can alchemize each one of them so that it works to your yeah, advantage. That's very insightful. And yeah. that's something I don't want to, that was beautiful. You know, you, how you've just given that analogy about, yes, you work from home and don't forget what that possibly you don't know what they've gone through. 
I'm at home. I run all my shows and podcasts in the comfort of my, and my God, what a journey I had to get here. But that's uh-huh. really insightful. And I, I do like that analogy. So I may have to plagiarize you and use it on another podcast. Sure, please do. I'll plagiarize but, you. But please yeah. do go on. That was beautiful. That was. Thank you. Uh, and the part that's missing is I've been putting out, being of service, putting all the spiritual healing stuff out there, fulfilling my dharma, as they call it, uh, or my purpose. And But the part that I haven't really shared a lot about is how much I su- suffered, struggled mm. with addictions. Yeah. Um, uh, with uh, depression, anxiety, yes. isolation, yes. mental yes. health, yes. entities, like Ditto. all of it. All of it. And, and it's one of those things where people only, and I'm, I hide it so well, people are like, really? You seem happy yeah, all the yeah. time and you're smiling all the time. As soon as I go back home and all my friends are gone mm-hmm. and I close the door and it's just me, I'm left with my traumas. Mm-hmm. And there's this uh, this thing that happens so what happened to me that uh, I've only shared maybe once or twice before is when I was four, only recently in the last few months, I had a past life regression therapist tell me that at age four, um, I had a visitation by a being that was a reptilian being that activated my Kundalini energy, my sexual energy. So it wasn't a sexual violation. It was, it was a violation in the sense that I, that's not something I would have naturally wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was a violation in the sense that now I'm feeding this being my life force, my sexual, it's not, it's not a sexual thing. It's like a dog when they run up to you and they jump and want to play with you, they have that life force energy, right? So it's not necessarily sex in the sense that we think about it, but we're filled with this life force energy. So it was extra activated with me. And at a very young age, I was very sexual, um, and, and then when I discovered, you know, sexual pleasures, that became like almost an addiction and it yeah. lasted for so many years. Mm-hmm. And what I didn't know, and now I'm connecting all the dots, is that it all goes back to that time. And, and it was scary because I, I experienced it on some level, even on, in your dream state, yeah. it, you're still aware of what's happening on some level. Yeah, yeah. So imagine suppressing this all these years not knowing what it is you can't heal something you don't even know happened yeah Yeah. um but it's the root it's like right there you know like anytime i don't feel in control Mm -hmm. uh, i'm scared i'm overwhelmed it's going to bring me back to this Mm -hmm. intense emotion that's never been released and my coping um is 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 sex because that's what was being fed on so it's this weird link in my head i'm like why am i why is that my go-to when i'm you know, triggered. And I I couldn't figure it out on my own. No one could. And uh, until I had, you know, I prayed for it. And and then these synchronicities came my way. And and now it's like slowly unfolding. It's like the layers are slowly unfolding. And what I realized was I was that lonely kid that didn't feel that felt alone at home, Mm -hmm. felt alone uh, at school. And so apparently this being was there as a sort of a companion. They're like, hey, no one's in your life. I'm going to be your friend, but I'm going to feed off of you. And Mm -hmm. in return, you can have companionship. And I have no conscious recollection of this, but I'm intuitively piecing like how you would do something criminal yeah. investigation yeah, yeah it's uh, it's how it you, you you when you deconstruct when you start to deconstruct something and then you start to put it back together and you look at all aspects of it it's when you deconstruct it mm-hmm. you your perception shifts mm-hmm. and that's what the process is what that you went through in mm-hmm. my case i didn't have any but i had dead people and mm. I didn't want, it wasn't till later on, um, the midgets were ET. But however, yeah. so I had companionship. I was talking to them. I was on my own, sometimes locked in a room. And so mm. I had them. So it's the same, different, same experience, but slightly different, you know, yeah. how, it, how it works. So I, I resonate with that. And I'm sure there's millions of other people that have gone through a very similar experience. So yeah. Going through that, um, I'm only anxious that we get the best of the best in before we end um, the show. Yeah. Um, what comes after? Yeah. So uh, first of all, just being aware that what what's uh, how are you like assuming? First of all, we know if we have an entity feeding off of us or not. And if you're not aware, it's like how much are you feeding your addictions? How much are you staying yeah. in isolation? Are you avoiding connecting with nature? Are you avoiding the light? 
Are you avoiding? Uh, so sometimes we think these are our thoughts, but it's really the it's like a the, the entity's thoughts to eat the foods that are going to keep us tired, to avoid the sunlight, to avoid nature, to avoid reaching out to a friend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't even know that those are like in, in the Quran, there's a prayer that says, Wes Wes. Uh, um, uh, was was a jinn, the whispers of the jinn, yeah, yeah. and it's a prayer that says, God, protect me from the whispers of the jinn. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I want to listen to your words, source, God, universe, and I don't want to listen to the words. I mean, I obviously, you you know, because we spoke before about you know my Ara um, Islamic connection, Arabic, and the mm -hmm. jinn. And when I was studying comparative religions, and I, I spoke to some, some wonderful scholars in London, I went to London, um, and others um, when I traveled, and uh, what I saw was the jinn that they'd speak of, there's the bad jinn and the good jinn, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. And I would say, so no, no different to human beings then. So there's yeah. another, so, but what got me that, Tarek, I've got to just slightly digress, guys. Because other people may be wondering this. Well, it's about me at the moment. Um, I would say, and, you know, well, I see dead people and I'd get, oh, de Belerman and shit on a regime, you know, and all that. Uh, and I'm saying, but hold on, hold on, hold on. You're aware of the jinn. And some, when I was in North Africa, they were telling me of their experiences with the jinn. But mm -hmm. some were saying they were good jinn and they were mm -hmm. bad jinn. And then mm -hmm. I went to like um, King Solomon, who did, he brought up the, the jinn to come and so this so for me um was really important for me on my path especially coming from a, a mediumship and talking to dead people and having contact with other dimensional beings that it was in islam it was as it was in christianity judaism and catholicism mm -hmm. so i just found that fascinating so you was aware of both the good and the bad yeah, I mean, I felt the presence of, I mean, I can never, I'm not a seer, I'm a feeler. So, uh, uh, and and I do have a, a critical mind, even though I've experienced so many beautiful things. So I never say I know what God is. I just know I felt the presence That's of a it. loving That's energy. Yeah. I don't say I believe in guides and angels, but it felt like I was it being felt held like and loved by them. I say, call yeah. them what you want. And yeah. at the moment, they feel like angels yeah <laughs> you just there's a sense of this reverence of this ascension of this and then because i know the difference between coming in as a medium i know the energy of spirit the different the mm. female the male mm. you know the funny ones the, the not yeah. so funny ones. and I, you got used to that and then obviously a, a lifetime of contact different types of experience and then these beings that have always now i have the total realization have always been there um, you just I say angels just so people have to know what, what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. Because we need to articulate something okay. that is unspeakable, really, because yeah. it's nameless. So, but yes, I'm, put it in I'm the category you. of angels yes. or God. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I, I was when I was channeling today for the entity section of my of my course, I, it came to the conclusion that there is no good or bad. Like even the ones that were bad, as I was writing it with one yeah. of uh, my team members, we we were basically yeah. Yeah. Uh, teaching our students that, that what is that being there to teach us is really, that this is how the victim might look at it as good or bad, but the creator uh, consciousness that we've, we've stepped into when we're in our power. Uh, is going to ask the question, how is this here to teach me? What can I learn from this Absolutely. experience? Yeah. And so what I had to learn was that this entity on some level, either we created a cord or a bond, or maybe on my, in my sleep state, I signed a contract, whatever the case may be, these guys are the ultimate tricksters. So as smart as we think we are and as powerful as love is and the divine and the light is, these guys are the ultimate tricksters. So they know the loopholes, they know how to get us to give our power away indirectly. But the beauty is we have to consent to it. On some yeah. level, we have, yeah, yeah, even yeah. in my dreams, even in my dreams when they wanted to manipulate me, they had to go, hey, come into this door. And only when I went through that door, yeah. it led to a portal to where and they lived. I'm so in total agreement. And I've had made discussions on this. I said, well, we um, have homo sapiens sapiens having this experience. Free will. We have free will. No, we don't. I said, no one forces you to do anything. Yeah. Yes, no, no. I said, no, they don't. And I, and that's me. You have a choice. And mm -hmm. it depends on whatever. 
your experiences to be in this timeline, but you have a choice. You, when you're younger, you don't really use too much as a discernment. Yes, we talk, we start to practice discernment. Yeah. We have no idea what we're doing, but first of all, we're rebels and anarchists. We go the wrong way. Shit, that don't work. Slap. That's that, and then something happens that we go, okay, that's not working. I need to shut the fudge up now, and yeah. we start processing through discernment. So yes, it's it's a process again. It's a process. Yeah, hundred percent, Gloria. And I feel like step one was to acknowledge that oh, all those times I was going to my addictions, I was indirectly feeding this being. Mm -hmm. Then I had to realize, okay, now I need to cut my cords, take my power back, yeah, and like really do a ritual to like complete boundaries you're not welcome in my field anymore uh, and what i realized is uh when i was going to feed my addictions whether it was overworking isolation you know yeah, anything, thank you I was under, what's that Sorry to stop you thank you when you said addictions overwork addictions is not just sex drugs so and rock and roll people yeah. think their addictions overwork yeah, yeah. um uh, we could just go on forever social but media uh coffee like yeah uh, TV, wanting to be seen progress. they're all subtle forms of addiction and, yeah and if you see that you're stagnating and constantly having to get a fix where it could be even swimming it could be jogging it could be going to do you know how many people live in the gym no even yeah Dying. anything all these little traumas if yeah. You, yeah we all there's so many uh socially acceptable addictions yeah. and then the socially unacceptable Absolutely. addictions we so all have them raised another valid point there Tarek, and thank you for that there are more addictions on heaven and earth than what you think they are you've yeah. just got to be aware and identify it and go do you know what i never looked at it like that you yeah. know because i knew i knew years ago who that was years ago and I, every day I went to the gym and I went swimming. And I try to tell you, Tarek, after I come out of the gym, um, I would have this buzz. Mm, and it was, it was a, yeah, a buzz. Yeah. And then by the next morning, I needed to get ready quickly. Forget, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I had to go back. And it didn't last for too long, by the way. It yeah. didn't, it really didn't. But what I experienced was addiction other than alcohol. Yeah. And I, and I really feel there was like addiction till I experienced it. Yeah. yeah, and Gloria, I feel like for everything, there's a there's the light side of it and the dark yeah. side of it. So even for working out, like yeah, it's great if if you're someone who struggles with needing to go to sex, drugs, or anything yeah. else for those fixes. What is the healthier version of that? And if if working out yeah. gives you those chemical good yeah. feelings, uh, you yeah. know, there's the you know yeah. jogging or spending time in nature. There's you know, there, there's definitely the lighter versions of those things, but the boundary is so important. Whatever ritual you need to do to say, hey, whatever you are, you're no longer allowed in my field. You reclaim your sovereignty, you re yeah. reclaim your power. Yeah. You're not allowed in my field. But what I noticed was I could do that. They're not in my field anymore. And then as soon as my vibration drops, because mm -hmm. I'm feeling overworked, mm -hmm. or I start to go towards my addictions. So I'm yeah. overeating, I'm yeah. binge watching TV, I'm isolating from friends it almost indirectly feels like I'm in a frequency where they can easily come into my field. And it's almost like me feeding the addiction is then attracting them. And it's this weird symbiotic thing. Uh, but on some level, I'm calling them in. And I realize sometimes I, I just want to shut down from the world. And what I didn't know when I was overwhelmed, which is part of my trauma at age four, overwhelmed by that experience, I would not only shut out the world, but I'd actually shut out source and God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indirectly, I wasn't aware. I was just like, I'm overwhelmed. I can't connect to this yeah. infinite light. I'm going to get my energy from food, from what binge watching TV, from yeah. myself. So it's like when you cut that connection, yeah, that's what they call the Luciferian experiment in some. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Some, I'm with it. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's a very yeah. good discussion to raise i mean in my mm -hmm. case i've always been an artist so i would direct everything i had i and connect through art it was always mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. and i spent more time doing art than even going to school i think um so is I, that your I had, artwork behind you gloria yeah, that's all my work that's all my oh, wow that's all my beautiful arcanatans back there and all something and there's okay. lots of it's but i've always been an artist so 
I had that outlet. So, but I never, I've always known, I, I never blocked it to disconnect from the source. But only one time was when I attempted suicide mm. because I was resisting it so much, you know, um, that I had to experience that experience yeah. to shift my consciousness. So I, I never cut that out. I've, yeah. I, I was in some very dark places when I was playing the role of the victim. Um, I'm telling you, it was darker than dark. I, I yeah. used to say, people talk about hell and even religion, we talk about hell or Jehannam. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, there is no hell like the hell of my mother's home. Mm. I've been to hell and back so many times yeah and i didn't die i should have died i should have died and but that was the process it's not a victim story i don't need sympathy but it now i see it as the process but mine was attempting the suicide which is denying the source but mm -hmm. i did it once so i understand you shutting it down and yeah. and not meaning to cutting it off but you experienced what you needed to experience similar to me but in a different way totally and, yeah. and the lesson from that gloria was um realizing what i was doing uh, it was an unconscious survival yeah. tactic yeah. Uh, mechanism and it, oh, what i needed brilliant. to learn is yeah. go in those moments when you're so triggered and you want to go back to reliving that thing that happened when you were four yeah. and survival yeah. and getting the energy and mm -hmm. it's like hey i'm right there for you you know this yeah. this infinite light source yeah is there for you and can you go to it in those moments can you break the cycle and go to it yeah. create this new pathway to yeah. go to it because that's what i didn't do when i was scared and at four yeah. and going through my trauma i forgot that i have power and i, think I that's I part of the journey for all of yeah. us we all forget and even, no matter how many times we have you know the the increments of realization and then there's a period we just fuck up basically and then it comes back again as we're maturing um mm -hmm. and as you know the universe works to change the social determinants around us and then we tail off a bit you know i mean you know there's normally the teenage years that everyone just goes wild mm -hmm. believe it it's part of the process but that's part of it and in increments it's not like it's blasted on you so to speak but it's through that growth and maturity Mm -hmm. um, and when you start to understand what is going on and there's trauma here and I need to, uh, you know, I wouldn't deal with my trauma. I love playing the victim. Obviously, it was mm -hmm. I needed to experience more of playing the victim for whatever reason. But a point came and I tell you what, you, you know, you said you prayed to God and you cried. The point came and I remember I, I, I knew there was a source that was love, not a religious God. And I went down on my knees and I cried, I screamed, I didn't ask for any favors and I just begged and my heart helped me. And I must have been there for hours, just, you know, snot running out your nose, really gone for it. The most, you, what an unsightly thing to see, but I got to the point of this human experience um, and I was in my, I was hitting, that was in my early forties, just hitting it when that happened. And when I did that, I can, it went calm. I composed myself and I sort of like forgot I'd even done that. I can't, it, something happened. Even that experience on my knees, begging this, please, I can't do this. That experience, like I forgot about it. And my path to sh and everything then changed. Mm -hmm. I had to go to the deepest again. And I kept saying, how did you ever say that? How many times? Bring it. I, I actually said, God, bring it on. What else? Did you ever think, bring it on? Oh, that people say bad luck comes three times. I said, not in my case. It's continuous all through the journey. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you get that sort I, of I do get... Um... I do get um, like, for example, my ex-wife walked out on me because I had a lot of uh, victim left over when yeah. I, I was married young. I was like 27 yeah. and I would start these arguments from my pain body, from yeah, yeah, my yeah. victim, from all yeah. I was feeding it unconsciously. And I started yeah. arguments 
her last words to me were, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. Yeah. And I just, I vowed, you know, God, universe, I will continuously work on myself uh, yeah. to this. So this never happens again. Yeah. And I would literally do a healing session every single week. Uh, and it's been 10 years. And uh, earlier this year, I almost just completely gave up because, you know, that anger came up in me again mm -hmm. and it scared off this person. And I was like, it reminded me of my ex-wife 10 years ago. I broke down and I started in crying. I was like, I was like, what? Yeah. I can't do anything more. Like people are expecting me to be like the saint and I'm not a saint. You know, mm -hmm. the Hulk appears, comes out every now and then and yeah. I get angry. And I got uh, a Hulk in me somewhere. She comes out now. And she goes, I don't give a flying fuck. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so for me, I had to accept my imperfection and I, I had to go but deeper. I, I don't, I hold on, deeper. hold on. I don't see it as an imperfection. It's part of who you are. It's part yeah. of your experience. And your experience has been a journey of beliefs, concepts, ideas, mm -hmm. social determinants, that are formulated and you've worked through them and but some things there is a unique personal autonomy about the individual conscious being and that yeah. is you know that's not a mistake it's who yeah you're... gloria what's coming to you when you're saying that is for example the word aggression the other day someone yeah. was like hey Tark is really aggressive and my response was like yes i have aggression uh, I'm, I feel like all the dark, I've seen the dark side of humanity outside of me and I've seen the darkness that's uh, uh, in me, yeah. the potential to, to utilize yeah. it. So I've, I've expressed it. it, I've received it, I'm aware of it. I'm, the worst thing you can do is just ignore it and pretend it's not there or judge it, it in someone else and go, that person has darkness, like you're full of only light. Yeah. So I'm aware of the darkness. The yeah. question becomes, can I use this aggression maybe in some of my rap songs? Because I'm a rap artist, you know, people yeah. can listen to the song and, and let it out and just get out all their anger. Can I put it into dance and just create such a dance, yeah. passionate dance or a theatrical thing? Or how can you alchemize that aggression? Or maybe use yeah. it, maybe use it against what's happening right now. Create a aggression energy that goes, I am sovereign, and you know, use that aggression to. Yeah exercise your sovereignty and yeah or can if you don't control it then it'll just like shoot out at random people I, and, totally, uh, yeah. I, I totally agree i mean you know i had periods i mean obviously a good few years ago if someone had been you know what we egotistical disrespectful let's just mm -hmm. say i would have face planted you yeah, yeah. Open. now yeah. i i don't have that aggression and i haven't had it for a very long time I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, mind you, if you, I'm sure it would rise from from a natural instinct in the human experience if you went near my children to harm. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, I'm sure it would because it would be the mother protector coming in. So I'm There's not saying purpose. I'm going to have that. You know, you know, people have tried to press my buttons, and you know, they they're just wasting their time now because I just go, I don't give a flying fuck. Your opinion doesn't matter to me anymore. And yeah. it's actually none of my business. But I emotionally don't feel nothing. But I did go through the process of, you know, um, wanting to be a very, I was very, very, very aggressive. Very aggressive. And it got to the point in my, I think it was my late teens, no, mid-teens, that a very close friend um, pissed me off for whatever reason. And I remember picking up a fire poker okay a rage the trauma was coming up at that point actually that was early teens that was before i attempted suicide there you go look at that i just realized that and as the poker come up the beings come in i don't know what they did and i know mm. that's not who you are that's mm. not who you are and that never happened like that again and I knew I had to deal with the aggression. However, that's one thing. But finding the guts to go and seek help, mm -hmm. that's another. Because yeah. for me, I was sick of a victim story. I was sick of telling people. I never told anyone about childhood stuff. But later on, I didn't want to tell people because I didn't want their sympathy. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Do you understand? So it is a process that this aggression... It's not a negative, it's an energy that you can, as you use the words, alchemize, which is wonderful, that you can transform it. 
you can mm-hmm. take that energy in, and I took my energy eventually and I really put it into art mm-hmm. and dance. I love to dance. Mm-hmm. I love music. I love yeah. reggae and I love um, classical music. Mm-hmm. Um, and I channeled it a different way. And I found my way to channel it. But I'm sure I could spark off an aggressive moment if something kicked totally. off. Totally. And, and you're right. Like just accepting ourselves and being gentle with ourselves and stop judging. Uh, not judging ourselves and and owning up if we you know yeah. if we slip up just own up to it you know i'm sorry i'm sorry that. sorry about that yeah. yeah i mean uh, but also like, like a that. simple thing i learned in a ceremony was uh, i ne- i was taught when you're when when you're triggered you just lash out that i i had a fa- uh, you know my father if he got triggered he would lash out yeah. so I have the programming that says when you're triggered, you lash out. lash out. The problem was when I was triggered, I would perceive it as this person purposely yeah. violating me or judging me yeah. or disrespecting me yeah, when yeah, the truth yeah, yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just highly sensitive mm-hmm. that Gloria, you could just from a very, from, from the viewers seeing you, you say yeah. one thing to me, but I'm picking up on yeah. where it's coming from. So you could be like, like giving me the finger with yeah. with your intention yeah. but saying the nice things and i yeah. would react to where it's coming yeah. from mm-hmm. as if you're insulting me and and yeah. i'll get that. so my my uh what i learned from a friend of mine was i have every right to express my aggression yeah. without uh taking it on yeah. uh, taking it out on anyone Absolutely. i have the right to express it right now a, bu- a button was pushed underneath yeah. it is a whole lot of aggression I'm going to express that aggression without taking it out on someone. So that, that was a little distinction I never knew. Yeah. Um, and then the other lesson I learned is what is underneath that. So I'm, I'm angry, but underneath the anger, I'm hurt. So I'm yeah. getting way better now at saying, hey, Gloria, um, really underneath it all, I felt really rejected when yeah. you said this, this and that. And that rejection just, I felt hurt. I felt sad. And I just wanted you to know that instead of me just being mad at you and you wondering what's going on. Yeah. Sharing the vulnerability. It's a beautiful process. And what I want to pick up on, because we do have a similar history with um, obviously Islam, Palestinian and Arab and all that. What Mm. I found, I don't know. So I'm not saying this is so, but if you could let me know, I found being married to an Arab and, and mixing with Arab people and Muslim people, there was this thing for the male that was inbred in the boys. And it was obviously in my Mm ex-husband of this, don't you diss me, don't you disrespect me. That caused, I saw people, I was in um, one country and I think this guy, um, I don't know what it is in Palestinian, but he, he called the other guy Hamara, a donkey. Hamara, yeah, donkey. Hamara. That's my biggest trauma word. Yeah. I, I hate and I'm that telling you, so every time <laughs> in the suit, and they go, oh, and it's boom. So they go, didn't and then they're hitting their mother. You disrespect my mother. And I'm going, what the fuck is annihilate him? So, yeah. I mean, it was an experience. And, and, and I do remember near the end of my marriage, I, I, I just, I had to, I called him, yeah, yeah, I did yeah. it, I had to, because, because I knew I'd press his buttons, you know? Yeah. But what I'm trying to show in different cultures, so different ways, mm-hmm. that is not innately who you are, but you were raised in that um, culture. It's a lot of trauma. A lot, a lot of, of trauma. Some cultures just come with a lot of trauma. And yeah, very Arab high culture. egos, very high yeah, egos. Yeah, hot-headed, yeah. hot-blooded. Yeah. Hot. Yeah, our blood's I mean, boiling. So all it takes is a little thing a and here. it's all coming out. If you call someone a donkey here, they go, oh, what the fuck, your ass? And they'd walk off. But yeah. I couldn't, I was seeing fights to the death. Yeah, honestly, that word is probably the word that is my biggest trauma. And it really means like you fucking idiot like that. And with such a yeah. degrading way. Absolutely. <laughs> very degrading. It presses a button. I think it's a wonderful, a wonderful word because... Because uh, I had to learn what press and they never, you know, when they, you know, I remember, you know, uh, my ex husband saying to me after I divorced him, you're going to burn in hellfire for eternity. Yeah. And I went, well, as long as you're not there, it's okay. Honey. 
You know, that's what I said. So it didn't press my button. But, yeah. you know, back in the day, I had things that would press my button. Yeah. But mine were different. It was a different experience to your experience. Mm -hmm. But I recognize in, in Muslim, do not call them donkeys. Don't call them Amara. Do not. Amara. It, Amara. That's, that's, how was, war, that's how war started. Yes. <laughs> With that one word. Yes, I think it did. I think they called each yeah. other a donkey and yeah. we had divorce. I'm sure. Yeah, Gloria, I really tuned into that because I asked that question about my, my, my heritage and my culture. Yeah. And I feel like it's so old and it's so ancient. And yeah. it's like there's all this research coming up now that we were created by alien beings and yeah. like we got the reptilian brain and some yeah, people yeah. are born with, you know, did we have overlords that created us and were they abusive to us? And is that where our, is that why we're passing on abuse to our children? Like, where did this trauma start from? You know, I think and it just feels like there's so much drama, so much trauma, so many wars, and it goes so far back. I think it's part of the, so I think, it, well, my truth is, it doesn't mean it's true my reality is just my truth, um, is part of the human experience. I consciousness um, chose to experience all things at all times and to do so, to go through the process of realization, I, I had to create the polarities. We've mm. spoken about our individual polarities. Mm -hmm. We've just touched gently on it. We haven't even got into the greatest depths of it, um, you know, as to, you know, psychoanalysis, what is it you want to do? But mm -hmm. it's about it's part of the journey. It's mm -hmm. part of the play of Gaia. It's part of the illusion. It's I consciousness, the observer um, created. It's, it, no one's being harmed. I know it's going to piss some people off. Please mm -hmm. do not send me any hate mail. And for my truth, and I was a victim, brackets, nothing is happening. There is no doing. You are all, we are all magnificent beautiful source beings have an experience where actors in a play and we're playing our role and we're script writing and we're observing it at the same time so i come from a different truth when when i view this and when i see trauma now if anything comes to me and i feel a resistance through that perception i go ah i've got some work to do Mm -hmm. Why? Oh, what's what's that? So yeah. I I think we've all gone through all of this experience. Going back to Jack's position, I know it's complex, but the the Homo sapiens have gone through this experience to work through that individual. It's like if I take um, a PhD um, criminology and you take a PhD in neuroscience, we're different. We're different. We're experiencing it different, but we're going to come out at the mm -hmm. same does that make 100 percent, 100 percent, gloria and i feel like uh there are certain beings that are born here with like an older soul oh yeah and we're here to we're here to end the cycle so like yes. if the cycle has been going on for it's, a very long time we ended. come in we alchemize it for our ancestry but we also al alchemize it for our culture maybe and our, yes, you know i'd like I to believe in each lifetime i'm thrown into the culture that's yeah. got the most darkness i agree and, and and some cultures like i don't know haitians i don't know if they did the 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 study where like certain cultures are the happiest regardless yeah. of how much money they're yeah. making but like what makes one culture very hot-headed and and very ang mm -hmm. you know aggressive and what makes another culture very light-hearted and very soft and and loving right so you know who, who knows how far back it goes but we have the power to go all the way back to wherever it stems it's, from it's in our DNA, in the, it's in the genetics there is a i mean even though you know from non-duality this vessel is real i'm in this experience mm -hmm. i'm in this dream and i'm in it and it's real there is dna and it goes all the way back and mm -hmm. we, you know, from my truth, when you look at, um, for example, they say there's an arsehole and you see the arsehole and you think, oh, I was that once, mm -hmm. poor, poor guy or poor woman. And you, you yeah. don't judge them and you don't even get offended. And you think they're on their journey um, and we've got it all, but it all comes up. But the, the initial bit that comes up first is the individual, uh, what we call brackets, personal life experience on this one timeline we're in now whatever age that's the first process you go through but mm -hmm. i think as you go through it you're also it's pulling all from the dna 
it's coming. Mm. I don't know. No one friggin' knows. We just yeah. got theories. But the, the beauty of it that we could have such a conversation. I agree with you. It's to end um, the cycle. It's been in a loop. And I've all said, if you go back and study history, even the forbidden history, um, but the false history, it's like bloody Groundhog Day, millennium after millennium, Groundhog yeah. Day. And you get to the point and say that the, it's a repetitiveness and the loop has to be broken. Yeah. And I, this time for me, it's done. It's, all, it's done. I'm on a different timeline, Tarek. I'm not on that timeline. I've shifted. Yeah. And we, it's not because I've done it, whatever's done it. It's done. It's complete. And you can see how many, through the last two years, where people were forced to stop and be still. So I'm not going into that part of it, but people are forced to stop going dancing or stop going out with the mates or stop going to bingo or stop, stop going to work. They had to stop in the now. And something happened to billions of people around the world. For the mm. first time, the materialism, the egotistic personal achievement, and they started to realize, well, my car doesn't mean much. Well, my wealth, well, this, and well, my job's not obviously, oh. And they started because they were addicted to playing the role as mm -hmm. the human being. And many, through two years, have awakened and re-evaluated, yeah, re-evaluated, started to deconstruct what it means to be a human. And you know, I always say to, well, I don't always say, but recently quite a lot, and I say to people, turn off your TV, don't read the news for 72 hours. Don't even see what's going on in another reality. And mm -hmm. just be with your friends and family and film them if you want. You can film arguing with your partner. You can film, you know, having fun with your kids, walking the dog, going in the woods. Film whatever you're doing, having a fucking argument with anybody, but your reality, your truth, and film it for 72 hours. And just experience being around the, the things you love. Then after 72 hours, turn the TV on the news. You will look at that and you'll say, I'm not in that reality. Mm -hmm. I was in it before, but that's not my reality. Because you're in the now, you're experiencing mm -hmm. being a human. You're laughing, you're joking, you're sharing, you're healing. You know, you, you actually, you know, these aspects came out. And then after in the UK, I don't know about over there, we come out the lockdown quite quick, even though we had to. People come out, Tarek, and they went, hello. Neighbours were talking to each other. And everywhere you went, someone, hello, and you just normally would go, hello, walk off. No, they're telling you their life story. Yeah. And for me, that was, it's ended. The loops crash. It's yeah. gone. That was that's my observation. That's yeah, you, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you can use any experience to, yes. to your advantage, no matter yes. what. You yes. can use it to speed up your evolution, speed up your awakening, use it, yeah. yeah. I agree, that's beautiful. Any experience. Yeah. Any. yeah. yeah. And, and I like what you said about the, what are you tuning into? Sometimes you watch the news. I like to keep my pulse on what's happening because I do believe in the power of prayers and I yeah. like to send prayers and, and healing yeah, yeah, yeah. to whoever's going through. I just look to the experience. laws. I just see what's yeah. the law today. What's yeah. cool? and then I come away yeah yeah and then a lot of the empaths they overdo it it's like we how can you help how can you play your part be who you're here to be do what you're here to do without yeah. like taking on too much I, I feel no, a lot of us struggle by it. taking it on and no. if you're not doing like my heritage is Palestinian sometimes I, I I've, I've taken the trauma of Palestine and it doesn't do anyone any good it's not honorable I, I, I used to take on the trauma of Palestine way back in the day doesn't yes. help and it doesn't, doesn't help, help. So I mean, it's like how to have empathy without sympathy. I feel yeah. like sympathy, you yeah. take on the karma. Empathy, you're just yeah. tuning in and you can yeah. write a poem about it, do a painting about it, like alchemize it, like what artists do. Um, so that's one thing. And then... But any experience we said when people were, were locked up, they, they started to recognize thing called 
They never recognize, they were on autopilot to do, yeah. to, to do, to do, to do, to do, to do. Yeah. And then they started to feel emotions. And yeah. then they sat with their children for the first time mm-hmm. and, and assisted them in certain, yeah. or played with them. Normally, you know, women, and didn't matter America, but in the UK, women and myself included, I was forced to go to work for financial reason, reasons and your kids are at school or with somebody else. But that, I mean, mine are older now, but I'm saying many parents here said, I, I got time to play with my child. I don't, mm-hmm. I come home and they're having a bath and going to bed. So there was, there's many ways, as you rightly said, that through just being still, being still, that you can start to awaken something or see things differently. And I, I think the last two years cracked it for brackets humanity and we broke the loop. And in UK, we had in the, we only had really one strong lockdown at the beginning of March. We had all wild animals coming into our towns. Wow, because the humans were gone. No humans. And <laughs> I'm telling you, and we had deers, we had badgers, squirrels, we had every motherfucking creature in the world. And people were filming and yes. everyone, and it was going on, on, on social media and everyone's going, wow, I've never seen that before. And people were looking out their window. I've never seen that. Why? Because you've been doing, 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 go to work, mm. get up, go this. And so the two years was a like, boom. And even though you may perceive it as dark and trauma, no, no, it stopped. The universe come in and said, stop, because our, I, th- I don't know if our ex- experience, our experiment went off wrong somewhere, but we had turned, we, we were going down a timeline on earth that was not good. Mm-hmm. We, you know, if we haven't done what we've done already, we're all aware of, the horrificness of the human experience we needed to break that cycle as you said and something needed to happen mm-hmm. do you know what collectively one chose lock it the whole mm-hmm. mother earth lock it mm-hmm. down and look what happened mm-hmm. so it, you hear stories everywhere do you, how many people become creative Tarek? oh my god they started to create new businesses new way to um, and people were saying, oh, buy my food, buy local food. Mm. Let's not eat the processed food. Let's do community. Do you see what I'm saying? So, 100%, Gloria. I, I, I feel, uh, to conclude our call, I definitely love what you said. Uh, I don't 100%, I'm not 100% on the same page with everything, but I'll share my perspective if that's no, okay. You don't have to be 100%. Share your yeah. truth. Yeah, so uh, I'd love to, this is such a great way to conclude this call is um, I, I believe there is a consciousness here that is um, going against the divine mm-hmm. plan, let's call it. And then there is a consciousness here that is for the betterment of all of humanity. There are two opposing mm-hmm. forces, Polarity, maybe from yeah. a high, highest perspective, we're all one. Polarity, yeah. Yeah, maybe there's infinite dimensions, yeah, infinite yeah, yeah, perspective. No but for one, yeah. for one, it's like, what can we do to uh, create a, a prison planet? And one is, what can we create to create heaven on earth, let's say. And these forces are dancing together all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I feel like humans have the power and the ability to alchemize any situation. Absolutely. And, and we have the ability to, what do we want to focus on? We can, we can always see the silver lining in any situation. Um, and I also feel like, yes, there's all these positive, we can alchemize it and use it to our advantage in yeah. infinite ways. Mm-hmm. But I also would add the, but let's also acknowledge the fact that, you know, the intentions um like th- there is also not so good things like people the mental health is an all-time high entity uh, uh, is an all-time high there are countries that are being targeted by you know weather manipulation stuff there's people yeah. are dying there's yeah. people are starving that. Yeah. There's, you know it's going in it's going in both ways it's good like the darks you know the the bad's getting worse but the good's getting better and it's i hear you yeah. i hear- I, I mean, I how I describe, I don't disagree with you in that. It, uh, yeah. I, I see what you see. Um, yeah. My From my perception is 
I see the split in the timelines. Mm -hmm. So that I'm not on that dark timeline no more. Yes. Yes, That's I what I'm that. saying. So over the past so many years, I've always felt I was in two like different dimensions mm -hmm. in the now and both places now, and I can't even explain it. And then yeah, at yeah. some point sh the shift happened and I'm in this timeline. So this is, we've done it, if we've done it. And, yeah. But that timeline is still in my awareness. I can still observe it. Um, it's, I'm aware of it, but it doesn't touch me. It's like I'm watching a movie. Totally. I'm the totally. observer of, I'm like that. What the fuck are you doing now? Yeah. So Just I'm not, like when we were kids, when yeah. we were kids looking at everyone stuck in the simulation. Yeah, yeah. Right? But we didn't know there's an option to live in this whole, now there's like so many people living in this love reality. Yes. And it looks like, why are people choosing to live in that nightmare? And unfortunately with yeah. free will comes yeah. I'm going to choose to give my power away yes, and be controlled exactly. or I'm going to choose to own my power and create yes. my reality. So Exactly. And that's yeah. how I perceive it. And But yeah. that's just the way I can express it. There are many yeah. that see it the same but express it different, just like you did. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that's, I made a choice. But do you know what, Tarek? At some point way back, I didn't know I had a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say to everyone, turn off your TV for three days and, and just film your life. Live yeah. in your timeline, not that timeline. And yeah. when you turn that timeline, you know what? I don't know. Bye. I yeah. don't have a TV because that's because of it. Okay. Same. But um, Tarek, it has been an absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And I love the Arabic connection. Yes. It's, oh, God. I mean, it's just been amazing. Thank yeah. you for sharing your insights and your truth and, and some of your spiritual journey. And I, I hope that, you know, in, in the new year sometime, I can get you onto Inception podcast. I'm fully booked all the way through, just gone now. It's just gone. I, I, I'm not surprised. It's just constant. It's just constant. But I'd yeah. love to have you back and, and we could do a, spe a specialised topic that you want to talk about. I'll just keep interrupting you. It will be organic. We'll do some Arabic as well because... <laughs> That'll be fun. And I won't call you a Hamara. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll press you. Or do, or do. Uh, one thing I was going to say about the, the, the buttons is we can go through our whole lives um, controlling everything so we don't experience those buttons. And what I, I started doing recently is like, let's say Hamar, uh, it's a donkey idiot. Yeah. Uh, instead of me being like, no, that's the word, don't say it to me. I would do the opposite. I'll say, Gloria, every time you speak to me, I want you to call me Hamar so I can over. Um, uh, transcend I want the trauma. To, I do it in my oh. classes. I, yeah. I, when I do one to ones and we've identified what it is, I say, I'm going to press your button. And I say something yeah. and they're like this. I say, See, stay in that energy. Stay there. I'm yeah. with you. You're safe. Stay in that energy. Stay in that energy. And yeah. I'm pressing. So I, and I'll just come in and say, each time we talk, oh, you know, and I'm just gonna go, and that <laughs> you should be going <laughs> running down the road. I'm gonna kill her. <laughs> but that's what I do in my one to ones. I yeah. find the buttons, buttons, and I get the safe place with me to come out. They're safe. They mm -hmm. gotta feel safe. And 100%. I say, let's go through this experience. Yeah. And then when I deconstruct it with them, they yeah. realize they feared something that wasn't even there. And it masked something else. Okay. And that's how I do it. I press buttons. So I'm going to press your buttons, Tarek. Ah, anytime. <laughs> anytime. Oh, you heard that, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Tarek. And thank you, everyone, very welcome. for watching Open Minds. Thanks, Please guys. like and share um, from the FB page and YouTube. It's not about getting me out there, you know, and all likes for that it's about the guests that come on to the show and their journeys to share it to as many people as possible um in these wonderful beautiful times and if you are of um arab descent um when i say hamara and all the rest of it i said it wasn't intentionally to offend you yeah. it was just to offend Tarek to press his That's buttons nice. um nice. and he's, i get the i get the privilege you get the privilege <laughs> yeah, i'll cuss you thank you everybody until the next thanks time. guys uh one last thing gloria if right. anyone wants to receive we've got over 200 uh healing videos to activate your sovereignty That's freedom right. empowerment life purpose yeah. alignment yeah. i've got like five rap albums with healing frequencies in them mm -hmm. one of them's got an arabic verse in there 
Oh, um, send that to me. Send that yeah, to me. We'll do, we'll do. Yeah. Um, and one I did with my uh, Jewish brother. So we had a Christian Muslim yeah. Jew and, you know, Palestinian mm. and, and, and Israeli connection. We went on a song together. Um, really beautiful. Uh, it's called uh, Through the Looking Glass because we, we traded spots. I wrote my, oh, my verse as if I was born as an Israeli. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to and you. You know what? We do another we do another show on your music and your rapping because sure. my son's a rapper. He's an MC. Wait, I'd love to hear his music. And he's uh, I'll, I'll get you some of his. Um, cool. And he's um, an ADHD MC, but is spiritually awake. Um, but we do another one and talk about because I think music his ADHD. music changed. I was gonna be in a rap group called ADHD Attention Dialed Into. No, yes. he, and he was diagnosed with ADHD because he'd come in awake. Yeah, he was more than an anarchist, and he's even had it tattooed on his hand. ADHD. I love it. I love it. It's, he it's go a around and, it's he a goes around and says to people, "Do you want some ADHD? You should be in my head. I don't yeah. fit in here. I don't fit fucking in it." So he went yeah. into uh, music. Highly intelligent, highly scientific, top. He was, but he uh, he said, "I'm not happy. I don't want to do it." Education. I said, "Do what you love," and then he started music, yeah. and he can. Sp- bit bars as I can't even do this do you know what I mean and and yeah. I watched him in a concert couldn't believe it that yeah. and I'm so I said you do what you love but he's That's definitely it. um yeah it's I, like in the in the situations where you're not in alignment like school you're gonna yeah. be like an f student that was me but yeah, put yeah. me on stage put give me a b oh, and I'm yeah. gonna be an a plus yeah. student because yeah. that's my gift so he's it's got like and one of his, he was, he did a, a uh, you won't know the British stars in this world. He's got like a million followers on one. And, and but he's my son and he's a little shit. I was, please send me, yeah, please send he's me. He's a little shit. And I go, and I, I say, Ismail, you're a little shit, go away. And he goes, yeah, no, mom, I love you. <laughs> his name is Ismail? Ismail, yeah. Ismail, Ismail. yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Nice name. Yeah, his name, I named him that. And, Beautiful. you know, I just say, well, Ismail, I call him Izzy sometimes, but I, call him, I normally call him a little shit. But yeah. he's, he's he's come in and he uses and some of it I'm like, Ugh. but I listen to the words, the yeah. words. So I need Channel. to hear, I need to hear your words. Definitely. Okay. I'll send them to you. And for anyone listening, is it OK if I share a link? Of course you can. Yeah, got it. So Tarek yeah. com T-A-R-E-K, B-I-B-I on all social media. We've got tons of healing uh, videos every week. I create one. Uh, the one I'm creating this week is going to be next level. It's all about the sacred alchemy, esoteric wisdom of the mm-hmm. etymology of the human. So mm-hmm. all the secret societies talk about like all these inner yeah. um, temples within Ooh. us and religion is a metaphor for all the magic within us. So yeah. this week's video is going to be about activating all the inner power within us and the divinity within us. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Tarek Bibi on YouTube and then all my music's there on um, all streaming platforms under Indigo Prophet. So Indigo, like the color and Prophet, yeah. like the like uh, Buddha. Yeah. Um, it's got all my albums uh, oh, on Spotify and everyone else. So yeah. guys, obviously I've already advertised um, um, Tarek coming on tonight on the Facebook page and on my personal page. Um, and this video will be uploaded um, within an hour of, com- of the conversation ending. Um, just go on there, click on Tarek, go to YouTube, just put his name in and go and search. It's out there. Who knows? You might find something that resonates with you. Sometimes it does, but, you know, there's a lot of diversity with um, this lovely man. Um, oh, look, he's done that. Look, oh, bless. Yeah, I just I just shared the links. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. You see, um, obviously, I'm not here to share your links. I'm here to press your buttons. All right. Um, that's right anyway um that was shut your mouth you donkey um yeah. in in the arabic i live i can <laughs> but you see the fun you can have are you are you getting angry are you getting angry? um no it's just reminding me of of, uh, of loving <laughs> it's just, i'm seeing the endearment in it can you see how ridiculous it is to get angry when you're called a freaking donkey donkey yeah <laughs> You know what I mean? So, you know, and then what's going to happen? You can you can go somewhere amongst the Arabs and someone will call you a donkey and you'll just go it's over. Game over. over. I'm done with it. I'm yeah. done. You know, um, I've, I've had my buttons pressed by Claudia. It's not going to work anymore. Yeah. So um, there I go. But yeah, anger is a gift. Let's use it. You, it use is the a gift. gift and it's a tool. Anger. It's a tool. 
And it is, it is you're correct, not my terminology, tarot. It's an alchemical tool. Mm. Yes, it is. Well, I'm getting out of here because I could talk to you right. forever. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Bye I for mean, now. Appreciate See you. Soon. you.